I'm going to tie a Hammer Creek foam stone fly, and I've got a size 8 hopper hook here in the vise, and I've cut two strips of foam, both at about a quarter inch, the first of which is the orange, which I've impaled uh, towards the back with the hook, and the other is uh, just a brown color, which is going to be my top. The thread that I'm going to use is a 6 op black, so I'm just going to get this started here in the front of the hook, and then I'll trim off the excess. I'm going to use zap -a gap to glue those two pieces of foam together, so I'm going to put just a scrap piece uh, of foam here on the hook shank and tie it in, and that will give it more surface area to grab onto. So instead of just a hook shank with thread, you add a little bit more, uh, again, surface area by adding that scrap piece of foam. And then I'll bring my thread back down to the bend in the hook where I'm going to start my first segment. I'll bring the foam around and I'm going to have this measure out. So I'll just hold that there. I'll take my scissors and I'm just going to poke a hole so that the eye of the hook can pass through it. And then I can take my zap -a gap and just run it along the entirety uh, of the back of the fly here. So t just take my zap -a gap and a little goes a long way with this. So I'll just get that started on the back and then I'll take my foam and place it right on top. And I'll take my first wrap just to help it along here. So I'll take my first segment and pull that straight down and then pinch these two together until they start to set up. Now I can work my way through and I'm just going to make an X wrap or take an angled wrap over the top and then pull straight down and then this will start to create my my segments. All of those cross wraps are going to be covered up when I tie in the wing. So I've got my segments made and now I'm just going to come back and do some some trimming. I'm going to make a straight cut here and I'm just going to let that hook be my guide and I'll make two angled cuts just to give it some just to give it some taper. So I've just put a little taper into into that. And now I can start to tie in my wing and I'm going to use uh, some crystal flash as the first piece is kind of the underwing, so I'm just going to take maybe uh, eight to ten strands or so. I'm going to trim off the ends so they're nice and lined, and then I'm just going to tie that in on top. You're going to be tying a lot of material into this same point, so I try to do it with the least amount of wraps as possible. Uh, you're going to be using some more zappa gap for this, so it'll help hold everything together. So now I can take uh, my next piece, and that's going to be a fox squirrel tail. And so I'm going to use that tail. I'm going to hold it up kind of at a 90 degree angle here. I'm not going to stack this, but I want my tips to align. So pull off a generous clump and trim it. And this is going to serve as my wing. And then I'll clean off any of the any of the short pieces, any of that fur that might have come with. I'm going to measure this up and I want it to fall at the same point as my uh, crystal flash and that's just past the end of the pattern here so I'll transfer and make my cut. And hold that on top and then I can make another wrap so I'll do two kind of loose wraps, and then I can start to position this. Just pushing it down will help spread it out. And if it's a little bit long here in the butt section, you can just come back through and clean it up.
I'm going to come back to my Zappa Gap and I'm just going to put a drop on top here, right on the threads. And again, that'll help hold everything down. And then I'm going to put an indicator in. You don't really need it because it's a pretty big fly. Uh, but the reason I do is it helps cover up some of that, uh, some of those tie-in spots. So all that I've done here is taken a single hole punch and I take it to a section of orange and it comes out with these nice little nice little indicators. So I'm just going to take a wrap through right on top and you can see then that helps cover up all of those thread points. I'm going to tie in some legs to this and the legs that I'm going to use are these kind of silly legs. Uh, they're barred. You can use round rubber legs, whatever you'd like. I like them because they're uh, a little bit thicker in diameter but yet they move well and they're barred in the colors the same sort of dark and, and orange so I'm just gonna hold that up to the side and I'll take one wrap and just kinda position it so it's between the two I'll take just a rough cut here and then I'll do the same thing to the other side So two wraps through, rough cut, start to position them. And then I'm going to whip finish right at that spot. But before I do, I'm going to make some room here. So I'm going to trim it, uh, trim it up here at the head. And I'm just going to use again the eye of the hook as kind of my reference point. I'm just going to make a straight cut through. And I'm going to make two angled cuts back to give it the shape that I'm looking for. Alright, and now I can come back through and, and whip finish. trim off the excess and the other thing that I'll do then is put a zap some zap a gap here or some head cement rather on the on the thread joints on either side and that'll just keep those locked in place then you can do some final trimming of the legs. And you can tie these in a, a golden stone fly as well. Uh, but that is my foam stone fly.